<laughs> okay, we will make a start. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, this meeting of Wiltshire Council's Electoral uh, Review Committee. I'm Councillor Ashley O'Neill. I am chairman of this committee and also a cabinet member for uh, governance. We are broadcasting to the internet, so I will just shortly ask you to introduce yourselves uh, in a second, but also just ask you to be mindful that during this meeting, obviously, as we are broadcasting, that members of public present on the stream might not necessarily understand uh, some of the terminology that we are using uh, and some of the uh, previous meetings that we have all been part of. So please make sure that uh, you, you give it your full attention if that's OK. And we don't try and rush through these items. They are very, very important matters. Uh, and we want to, to make sure that we give them our full attention. If I could start on uh, my left, Alison, if you could just introduce yourself, please. Uh, I am Councillor Alison Bucknell. I represent Line and Division. Good morning, Councillor Ian Blair Pilling. I represent Avon Valley. Also happen to be the Cabinet Member for Public Health, Communities, Leisure and Libraries. Good morning, uh, Councillor Paul Oakway, representing Pusey Vale West. Good morning, Lisa Alexander, Democratic Services Officer. Senior Democratic Services Officer. Um, uh, Kieran Elliott, uh, the Democracy Manager for Democratic Services. Good morning, Councillor Gavin Grant from Malmesbury. Uh, Frank Kane, Legal Advisor for the Committee. Councillor Ernie Clark, Hilperton Division. Okay, thank you for that. We don't appear to have any committee members or other members of the council joining us uh, <laughs> online. I don't know whether or not we want to close that down or we can just leave it open in case someone joins. And I also believe that we've got Councillor Jackie Lay on her way. Uh, she should be here shortly, but we will uh, continue with the agenda formally. So first item uh, is apologies. I believe we've had apologies from Councillor Stuart Wheeler and Councillor Ian Thorne. Lisa or Kieran, are we aware of any other apologies at all? No, no other apologies. Okay, thank you. So item two minutes of the previous meeting. I hope you've all had a chance to have a good look through those. Does anybody have any comments uh, on the minutes if not could i have a proposer proposed a seconder okay are all those in favor and so item three declarations of interest that might be jackie coming in now uh, does anybody have any uh, declarations of interest to make nope so item four chairman's announcements i have none uh, item five public participation I think for the first time in certainly in a long time, we have no members of the public present with us. We have been downstairs to to check, and so nobody here with us today. So we can skip over that item, and then item six: community governance review 2023-2024. This essentially uh, is the bulk of what we need to uh, address today. So just to summarise. Hi, Jackie. I'll just give you a second just to take your seat. So, Jackie, we're on item six. So, you just made it. Well, it, it, that's the first main item. So. Uh, we've, we've just been this sort of through the other formalities, you know, apologies and everything else. So you haven't missed anything uh, just yet. So item six, Community Governance Review 2023-24. Uh, so this essentially covers the bulk of what we need to do um, today. So just to summarise, you'll recall that at uh, our previous meeting on the, make sure I get this right, you'll spot the deliberate mistake in the agenda pack. It says the 9th of January 2023, that, of course... Uh, we're supposed to say 2024 and you will recall that we made uh, a series of draft recommendations on on various different areas 
uh, that we had under review, we essentially then went into um, consultation. So that originally ran from the 12th of February uh, through to the 18th of March and was extended slightly uh, to the 28th of March. Uh, all of the responses uh, that we received across the various different recommendations are in your uh, agenda pack. So you've got them all in front of you there. We took the same approach as we have done previously where we, um, where we wrote out to individual dwellings where and there was a proposal to transfer them to uh, from one parish to another and uh, as we again as we have done before where we had a sort of a significant proposal we held a public consultation meeting so for this round it was just a single one that we had uh, in Mir that was on the 18th of March uh, you'll have seen my email hopefully yesterday just asking you to make sure that you had a look, uh, if you hadn't been down there physically, at least on street view, and uh, just given the level of public interest, I think it's fair to say it was a, a fairly interesting uh, meeting that we had in Mir with some very, very strong uh, opinions on, on both sides of the debate. I think it's just really important that we make sure that uh, if and when we do get to full council, that we, we've looked at it very, very closely and, and had the opportunity to, to see what it looks like on the ground, so to speak. I think that probably summarises where we are. I think we'll just go straight into it and, and go one by one. What I'm going to do is just uh, remind uh, you all of each of the, of the recommendations, and we've got the presentation there up on the screen, and then I will just sort of briefly summarise uh, sort of the output from the consultation. And then essentially what we, we need to do is decide, are we going to proceed uh, with the original draft recommendation based on the, on the responses uh, to the consultation? Uh, or you know, do we want to amend the recommendation and come up with additional draft recommendations? Uh, you know, or do we want to step, step away from something completely? So that's, in essence, what we need to do today. And we'll start with what I think will probably be the um, potentially the most controversial um, based on the sort of the, the responses that we've had throughout this process and that is Mir and Zeals. Now if you, I need, I feel like I need a laser pointer. I don't, don't think I do. Now, if you'll, re, you'll recall from uh, sort of our previous meeting, you've covered over the A now, uh, that we, following the sort of representations that were made to us, uh, we made a draft recommendation that the area um, highlighted there that uh, Kieran is just sort of moving the mouse cursor around um, which is an area that has the Hillbrush factory site in it um, a care home that is currently under development and uh, sort of one dwelling that is right on the edge of that um, black boundary line between the two um, parishes and that we had uh, made a recommendation to transfer that away from the parish of Zeals uh, and into the parish of uh, Mir. So in terms of the responses that we had, so we had 11 survey responses, which is significantly less than we had uh, when we did the informal survey. If you remember, I think we had um, about 100 and something in the informal survey. But the, the formal consultation, we only had 11 responses. We had uh, nine from residents of Mir, one from uh, a resident of Zeals, one from the representative of the of Mere Town Council, but no response from the actual single dwelling uh, that, that was proposed to be transferred that is on the boundary line. And in terms of how they were sort of um, split in their view, nine responses in agreement, uh, two in disagreement. And then we also, in addition to the actual formal survey response, we had three written responses that were submitted um, separately, um, but all were in agreement. So no, no disagreement there. So in total, 12 agree uh, and two disagree. So in terms of the arguments that have been made, I won't go over the sort of previous arguments um, that we had from the sort of informal uh, survey responses. We discussed that previously before we made this draft recommendation. But essentially those that agree are sort of saying, well, it's, you know, the site uh, or, or sort of the, that, particular area uh, is adjacent to the built-up area of the town, um, being Mir, uh, its proximity to the town 
uh, that the community there, certainly the residents of the care home, would be more likely to use the facilities uh, in Mir uh, than Zeal's, uh, given the proximity, and that it sort of naturally looks to Mir. Uh, those uh, in, you know, with, with disagreements that say that the potential for more businesses other than just um, the Hillbrush factory to use the site, uh, which they say obviously is currently in Zeal's, and then sort of various other comments that uh, are in there that I won't repeat. I think you can sort of make your mind up as to how you how relevant you feel they are um, to the arguments that we're looking at in terms of the statutory criteria. So that's uh, that's that's kind of a summary as to where we are with this particular recommendation. Does anybody want to start me off with a, a view on on where we go from here? Ernie, please. Um, all to say, only thing to say, Jim, and I occasionally do sort of classic car runs, and they very often finish at the brush sort of restaurant type, you know, the cafe. And I must admit, I always thought it was part of the town rather than the village. So I, I can see the logic in moving that small section into Mia. Thank you, Ernie. Anybody else? Uh, Ian, please. Um, I mean, one of those at the meeting in, in me, as you say, it was um, passionately argued from both sides. However, the, uh, I have to say that the passion from uh, the representative of zeal centred around the historic um, boundaries that... Um, there was an argument about kind of freedom of movement and what stopped anybody moving down a, a pathway and, and so on. And there was clearly a, a, a lot of attempt to focus this all. It was all about a, a land grab and all about um, the allocation of sill and things like that, which we, you strenuously said, please you know, leave out of the argument. We did hear, uh, in my view, logical argument from Mir as to why that was part uh, regarded as part of the town. And having looked at it myself down, down there, uh, I'd point out that, for example, um, while there is a footpath from the underpass and, and from alongside the, the 303, that's on one side of the road, and it becomes a footpath on both sides of the road, on the side of the triangle that we're talking about, at the entry to the brush company, and that's where the street lighting starts, and so on. So anybody driving past would assume that was a part of Mir. Then if you go to the, the, the arguments that we normally look at in terms of we're interested in residents, not commercial, not, not agricultural land, or, or so on and that, that the one resident we haven't had an answer from, that's regrettable. Um, but there will be a number of residents in this care home when it's constructed. And I'm afraid I have no doubt that they will be looking to the town. That's where they will go. That's where the facilities will be. And they are, in fact, it's a relatively short walk kind of around the corner and the church steeple the tower or what I can't remember the steeple or tower is in sight and so you would naturally assume you're a part of Mir and so in terms of the arguments that we look at which are to do with community cohesion and to do with ease of local governance I've got I've got no doubt I think that that the residents in that area should be a part of Mir and that's therefore that house and that care home then you get into well where do if we are going to move a boundary where do we move it to and i personally think that the natural boundary is the 303 and it is that triangle uh, there's almost a bigger argument if you wanted to go there i don't go to say well why don't we think more about the 303 and the boundary and north south but we weren't really asked to look at that and i think you would be opening up a, a hugely different debate which is not necessary i think we make we would be making a sensible adjustment to go with the proposal from mir okay thank you ian 
Does anybody else want to speak? I think Gavin. Thank you very much, Chairman. I unfortunately couldn't attend the meeting, but I was um, travelled to Somerset on Bank Holiday Monday to see my granddaughter for, for the first time in, in uh, quite a long time, due to my breaking of my leg at Christmas time, uh, and travelled back on the 303, not least uh, for the opportunity of taking a look at, at this particular site and frankly to avoid the catastrophic jams on the M5 on Bank Holiday Monday. And I concur with absolutely everything that, that Ian uh, has said. It, 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 that there are so many indicators in the location that this is part and parcel uh, of um, Mir. And certainly in reviewing the, the arguments that have been set out um, before us in the, the formal response uh, that we've had, I, I, I can see no compelling argument that says we should actually retain this within zeals. In fact, the arguments seem to be rather more to extraneous factors, um, you know, people talking about low wages and the cabal on the Chamber of Commerce and so on. This is not to do with us as a committee, um, uh, Chairman. Um, we have that responsibility of cohesive community governance. Where do people identify with? I concur with the view that it's unfortunate we haven't had a view from the, the one resident that's there. But I'm sure were we to delay this matter, and I don't suggest we do, uh, until we had residents of the care home present, I'm sure they would be all saying to us, well, we identify with the town of, of, uh, of Mir. Um, as to the, the detail of the boundary, I think it is, it is the only one which currently makes sense um, as a logical uh, piece of work. And therefore, I'm, I'm, uh, I think our instinct uh, to transfer this into Mir is correct, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Gavin. Oh, I've got Jackie next, please. Sorry. Um, it's difficult because I think, as far as the public are concerned, they don't see boundaries on the ground. They, you know, if you look at the map, it does look weird to have that funny little bit coming out. Um, when you're on the ground, you probably don't realise where the boundaries are from one parish to another. And I don't think the public, whether they live there or they don't live there, are that worried as to which parish or town council they're in. And when it comes to whether they identify with a particular town or not, I don't think it matters to the public whether they live in Zeals, but go to Mir, or they live in Mir, and they use Zeals open spaces to walk in. They don't see it as different. They see it Wiltshire. So if we're going to start changing boundaries because of development, you could well say, coming back to my parish, that all the people who live at Ridgeway Farm and Malden View who all have a Swindon address and live right up to the built area of Swindon should now become Swindon because it's a completely separate unitary authority. And I don't think that the parish of Purton, not so much the parish council, but perhaps the people in Purton would be that impressed. We could also say in Wooden Bassett, where they have just built a huge care home at Marsh Farm, should we be looking at changing the boundary there? Because Marsh Farm is in the parish of Lydia Tregose. And everybody at Marsh Farm and the people living in that care home, they have a Whitten Bassett address, will think, well, we can just walk across the road to Aldi and Lidl, which is about to be built. Where do we, where do we live? So I think when it comes to the public, they don't really care whether it's one thing or another. So I think what we need to be looking at is, is the comments that have been made by both parishes, as in town and parish, and then we have to make a difficult decision because whichever decision we make on this one, we're going to make somebody unhappy. I shall, uh, I shall let others come in. I can see that uh, you know, people are sort of ready to rush for the, you know, for the, um, for the microphone button. But I think, I'm not sure I entirely, well, probably don't 
agree with you at all, Jackie. I'm afraid. I think people. I think people. Sorry, Jackie, uh, I wasn't asking for agreement. No, I'm no, just no. making a you're, point. You're of making your point, but I'm just, just going to address, from my perspective, some of the things that you said. I think people do care about where they live, uh, if you want to sort of pull it like that, because uh, if if they didn't, we wouldn't have such. You know, significant engagement in these processes and responses from members of the public that tell us quite clearly you know where they feel they do identify and you know you sort of use the example of your of your own division and the development that is right on the edge of Swindon uh, but is in the parish of Purton maybe if you surveyed those people living there they may well say that they feel they live in Swindon um, who knows and so maybe that's the kind of worms that one might not want to uh, um, uh, to open, I would argue. I think the one point I probably would agree with is that you know, members of the public aren't looking at these kind of maps and these exact um, boundary lines uh, you know, to sort of determine where they live. What they're really looking at and in terms of well, you know, how they sort of see things is based on features on the ground, you know, geography, uh, you know, sort of good boundaries, such as things like roads, uh, you know, major roads, particularly in, in this instance where you, you've got something quite significant cutting through an area uh, or, you know, water courses, as we know, is often they're not the sort of things that are crossed and, and they make quite good boundaries. And it, it is those sort of features and things like, uh, yeah, I think uh, Councillor Blair Pilling made the point about street lighting. You know, that is a very good example of you know, something that all helps to determine the look and feel of where you are and what it's connected to. And I, I think I'm probably quite satisfied in, in my own mind. We've looked at this very, very carefully uh, in, in a great amount of detail that, you know, if you are on the road heading out of Mere towards the, the sort of the, the location that we're talking about transferring here, and that it, it very much feels like it is still part of the same uh, location. And, and for me, that is Mir. And then very clearly, to get to Zeals, you have to pass under the 303 and then make a left turn. And it feels as though you have, at that point, quite clearly left Mir. And I think to, put a, to, ar to argue that, um, you know, that triangle that we're proposing uh, to transfer to, to Mir and say that you know, the, the sort of the residents of the care home living there, or that will be living there, would identify more to Zeals versus me. I, I just, I don't think would make sense. So I'm, I'm quite comfortable that from a statutory criteria point of view, and we look at the, you know, sort of the good governance, and we look at community cohesion and, and what the links are, that I think that in proceeding with our draft recommendation and making it um, a, a final recommendation to to full council that I, I would be comfortable that I think we we have come up with the right solution uh, here. Just to address one final point before I bring others in, I did ask at the public consultation about what what else potentially in this area uh, you know, is not right in terms of boundaries. And uh, there was a short discussion uh, about, I don't know, Kieran, if you can zoom in on the, on a, a better map. <laughs> there was a discussion about the boundary line as it goes south from the Hillbrush site, as it, it follows a road there. And during the course of that discussion, uh, you know, it became clear that there did not seem to be any appetite from anybody in the room present, and there were a good number of people present, uh, that there was anything else that uh, they thought that we should address uh, in that, if that makes sense. I just wanted to make that clear. We did have that, that discussion. I see that Ian McClellan has got his hand up. Um, Ian, I'll bring you in now, because I'm not sure how long you've had it up, and then I'll bring others in. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, first of all, apologies for getting in late. I, I did my usual open up Teams, click on the calendar, and it usually says join, and there was nothing there other than, yep, you've accepted this one, and I've been scurrying around trying to find yeah. how do we... How you, do we well, you've managed it now, so good to see you. Well, well, only thanks to Lisa, so I'm still... I hope this doesn't happen every time. Yeah. Is this something that is new on Teams? 
I don't. Well, look, you, don't. You should have a, usually you just click on the calendar and it, uh, it yeah. comes in, you know, join now and away yeah. you go. Not anyway, sure. We'll make sure that the link is in there in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, the, um, what I was going to say, I, ju I just came in at the point where Jackie was speaking and, uh, and talking about the different parishes. And I, I did that um, street scene walk the, the night after the meeting, or you know, on the meeting, public meeting in Mir. And as I as I went along, I got the feeling uh, as soon as you'd gone past the, the house and the industrial estate was there, that this was no longer Mir. You know, there was enough greenery around that you were leaving, you'd left Mir. And we're going into the open countryside. And the time I got to the actual site we're talking about, it was quite a way down the road. So I, I wasn't, after that, as convinced as I was looking at the map and the, the mere you know, uh, <laughs> points to, to take on the, the area because it's mostly industrial. And uh, you know, by the time you get to the, that nursing home, it's quite a way out. So and, I, and we don't deal with industrial estates. So I, I, I came to the conclusion that it, it was more rural than it was part of me. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Ian. Who was next? I think I I think I saw Ian Blair Pilling go for the, the microphone first yeah, and then come to us. I think I had first. I'd like to come back. Okay. Let, let's let's bring Paul in then. Paul, you go first. Um, okay, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I couldn't attend the meeting because of other commitments, but um, um, my wife and I went to Somerset to a, a National Trust Garden, and we visited this on the way back, so I am very familiar with this. Uh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to talk at great length, because actually I think what Ian said is absolutely right, and I fully agree with Ian. But what I do find interesting is, is actually I'm looking at Google Maps, uh, and this location is in Castle Street. That's the street that's in. And actually, Castle Street then continues all the way into Mir, all the way into Mir. So there's a correlation between Mir in Castle Street and this location in Castle Street. Castle Street doesn't appear anywhere in Zeals, but it does at this location. So um, I think that's another important issue which I would like to raise, and I fully agree with Ian. Um, that's my view. I think we've got Alison. Next. Yes. Um, what, what the legislation doesn't um, put in words is the view of the man on the Clapham omnibus, which is effectively what we're doing. And uh, I agree that um, anybody looking at it would say that uh, that particular area is part of uh, Mere. Um, it's very disconnected from the main part of the Zeals. And so for that reason, I'd be quite happy to propose that we go with the, oh, oh, sorry, that and the other reasons that you've all stated, I'd be more than happy uh, to propose that we, um, we go with the recommendation that we've been um, consulting on. Okay, and do you have a seconder? Yeah, lots of lots of hands there. Pick pick someone, Lisa, if you can. And does anybody want to speak on this any further before we we go to the vote? Yeah. Okay, Ian, please. I I would like to lay to rest a counter argument to what um, was being said down here about the public don't care and making a comparison with other parts of Wiltshire etc. I think clearly uh, my focus is more on residents than the, the public at, at, at large in this and I would say clearly um, the governance of the residents in that area do care. That's why this, why this is in front of us in the first place. Um, and if you'd been at that public meeting, you would certainly take away the impression that a substantial number of people cared very much about this. So let's lay that to rest. The, the second point is, I don't think we should be arguing this in a comparison with somewhere else in Wiltshire. We're not being asked to look at the somewhere else in Wiltshire. There will be anomalies all over Wiltshire. We're looking at this particular case that's been brought to us against the criteria and objectives that we're set and we need to focus on that and i think we are but i just wanted to say that i'm sorry in, in repose jackie because I, I have no idea what your anomalies are that you're arguing and therefore i can't argue whether you're right or wrong but i'm not actually to put it bluntly interested i'm interested in this particular proposal in front of us 
Thank you. Ian. Does anybody else wish to speak? Uh, if not, we have got a proposal on the table. It's been seconded. Can I have a show of hands, all those in favour, please? Yeah. And Ian McClellan, obviously you cannot vote, I'm afraid. So I'm not going to ask you whether or no, not I you're get that. That's fine. Um, whether or not you're against or abstaining, um, but it's unanimous in terms of the room. Okay. Okay, we'll move on then. So the second recommendation that we put forward was around North Bradley. So just to summarise, you've got the sort of map up in front of you. The current boundary as things stand uh, on the ground is the black dotted line. And at our meeting in January, we uh, resolved to recommend that the boundary was amended uh, to follow the red line, red dotted line instead. In terms of the responses that we've had from the um, survey, only three responses, so the consultation, all in agreement and all of the individuals were uh, from the area that was proposed to be transferred. So it seems to be good agreement there from the actual people that live on the ground. So I think that's quite um, positive. Reasons for agreement uh, include the area is effectively part of, um, of the parish of North Bradley. Uh, the areas are accessed from North Bradley, all the sort of arguments that we previously made. There was a, a written response that was quite lengthy uh, that uh, was seeking to make an amendment to what we'd drawn and I think sort of pretty much aligned to one of the options that we originally discussed, which was to include the, sort of the whole back corridor and the, the green space. Uh, in North Bradley as well. And I think at the time when we made the recommendation, we talked about this at quite, uh, in quite a lot of detail, and we felt that it was important to follow the line of the uh, development, so as you know, including the sort of green space, so as not to sort of um, you know, depart from, from that boundary that had been drawn. And so I guess the, sort of the only thing we need to probably consider here is, uh, you know, do we want to sort of look at that again, has our view um, changed based on the evidence that's been provided to us in the uh, in that particular response. We didn't have uh, any response from the parish council or, or the town council. I'm not sure how quite how to take that. Maybe. Well, I mean, the, um, it, it, I mean the, this proposal was the town council's. So they yeah. may not have felt ne necessary, necessary to, to come respond. back to Yeah. But we haven't had anything from uh, from North Bradley, and they've been um, quite clear in the past about making representation where they feel that they need to. So whether we can sort of assume that they are broadly, um, you know, sort of not in opposition to this, uh, who knows? But you'll have to make up your own minds on that. Does anybody want to sort of come in and start me off with something here, Kieran? Have we got a map of the of the um, proposed amendment? That we put forward. Might just be helpful just to sort of remind us of what that looked like. Um, so this was um, as uh, the parish council uh, did also raise um, about essentially this is a proposed master plan the two applicate there are two applications on this site which have not yet been determined but this is the outline master plan to cover both sites um, and uh, with the with this green space here uh, being the sort of recreational space back corridor and so forth um, the parish council previously requested and this person did as well that the line be drawn well one of the parish council requested it they didn't want any of it to go initially um, but they have this person has proposed drawing the line um, much more closely um, it doesn't take into account the sort of little common area which you've proposed to move in as well because you'd also proposed this land running off down here with the, the little common road um, but yes they they wanted the new incoming development to be in Trowbridge um, but the green space the response did talk about it to protect um, the land um, the sort of land from development I don't think that's necessarily accurate because this whole area is a housing site um, and there are you know, policy reasons with bat mitigation and so forth why there is green space there so I don't know if there's actually much risk of there being building there um, and even if there was 
changing the parish line would not in itself affect that. Um, but they argue that if you want to move in new housing, then you should draw the line tightly to the proposed housing. Yeah, Ian Blackpilling, please. I admit I'm slightly confused as to whose proposal this is. Um, I'd make a, a point first. Whether or not planning happens on something is not re directly relevant to us because planning doesn't, wouldn't respect that boundary anyway in, in this, is, is my understanding. I thought we'd gone to some trouble to identify, and I, and I think in my mind, I could be corrected, please, if necessary, that this kind of amenity land was associated with those houses, and therefore I can't understand why it should suddenly be the other side of, of a boundary in this. But my question is, please, where has this proposal come from? What's its status? The person who submitted it is a member of the public. Um, they may have some association with the parish council, but it wasn't a parish council. The parish council had previously raised something very similar, but this was a member of the public submission. Okay, so what we dealt with before was proposals from both town council and the parish council. Am I correct? Okay, well, at the moment, I see no reason to change from our previous proposal. Thank you. I, yeah, I mean, I think when we made our initial um, recommendation, our draft recommendation, we drew our line as far as we could and to be lined up with what was in the development plan document. And that green space is clearly um, part of the development site that is in that document and so that is the basis on which we came up with a boundary and so i personally i'm entirely comfortable with um you know with with uh, our original draft recommendation and where we we drew that line and sounds like you and you are too but interested in the views of others as well i've got gavin next thank you very much chairman well i, well, I read this submission carefully um it was clearly some thought had gone uh, into it. That's not to say one would dismiss other people's views with, which are less detailed than uh, than this one. Of course, we would take them into account. But I, I think there are a couple of misconceptions in this um, uh, in this document. Um, the first we should note is it, it is the opening sentence. I understand the driving force behind a community governance review is a need to balance electorates. Well, th that is not the driving force behind the community governance review, as as we know. That may well be in the thoughts of the, the Local Government Boundary Commission for England in terms of, of Wiltshire Council divisions. Um, but it's not in our minds here, and it's not what we're required to do. Uh, the, the bulk of the document then, re then relates um, to the development of the neighbourhood plan for North Bradley. And I do understand why, why residents, and indeed come to, to the latter bit, town and parish councils get confused here as to how does the neighbourhood plan relate to um, the boundaries of a, of a given town or parish uh, council. Well, well, clearly there is some degree of correlation uh, where neighbourhood plans are developed uh, in that they, they are parish council or town council plans or combinations uh, of said. So I understand why, why that confusion is, is potentially uh, present. But nevertheless, we, our deliberations are distinct from uh, neighbourhood plans, which are to do with the allocation of land uh, going forward for future potential housing developments or, or indeed recreational or other uh, developments. Uh, and whilst I think there is some interrelationship, it isn't the driving force of, of what, we're, what we are tasked uh, to do uh, here. And perhaps... Um, this is a reflection going forward, it, it, given that, that there's a lot of work going on on neighbourhood plans and our local plan review, it may be necessary in our explanation of, of in future discussions as to how these matters do and don't relate um, to uh, each other. Uh, I um, find myself in violent agreement with, with Councillor Blair Pilling, as, as usual, um, in that I think we've spent a lot of time and, and thought carefully about the, the issues that, that uh, appertain um, to this particular um, development. 
uh, it's quite apparent that the uh, green space is part and parcel of the development itself. I don't think, I haven't seen anybody, I've seen it argued in this particular submission uh, as well it could be used as some kind of buffer or barrier. Um, but that doesn't deny the fact that it is part and parcel of the development uh, itself. Uh, and what we were seeking to do was, I think, to resolve uh, uh, some anomalies which had, had occurred, and, and they're all referenced in um, in area B, uh, the distinct areas B that we have on, on uh, our map on the screen uh, here, which hopefully those watching can also uh, relate to, which have been inadvertently uh, drawn into locations which, which they, where they don't truly uh, belong. Uh, and I think we've got that pretty much right. Um, clearly, we would take account of, of the opinions of town and parish councils, but also I think it's important that residents do understand that, that where, they, where they are making submissions to us, we will carefully consider what they have to say uh, to us. This is not simply a matter for, for, for town and parish councils. We are interested in what individual um, residents or groups of residents have to say to us, and we do take account of that. But I, I, I agree with Ian. I think, we, we, I think with the complexities that exist here, um, we have got this right in the original proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Gavin. Does anybody else wish to speak on this? I've got Ernie next. Yeah. Very briefly, Chairman. Um, it's a proposal that's come from Trowbridge Town Council. They've undoubtedly discussed it with North Bradley Parish Council. They're both in agreement. Um, the suggestion that's come forward from a member of the public, I'll be intrigued to know whether they've approached either of the councils, assuming that they live in the area, to see what either council might think of the representation. But I, I concur with what's been said. What we've, what's in front of us seems to make sense. If the houses are built out, which is obviously up to the planning committees in future, whether they go back into Trowbridge, which may happen in other parishes around the town, is a decision for the future. But I'll also, from what we've got here, Chairman, that moving those three areas into North Bradley from Trowbridge makes eminent sense. Thank you. Thank you, Ernie. Does anybody else wish to speak? No. Okay, can I have a proposal then? Someone, Ernie? Yeah. Uh, well, however you'd like to word it, that the three areas shown as B are transferred from Trovey Town Council to North Bradley Parish Council. Yeah, so I'm you're... happy to second that proposal. So we're proposing that we continue Absolutely. with our um, draft recommendation uh, as is from our meeting of, uh, in January. Okay, all those in favour? Okay, so that's unanimous. Okay, so next one is recommendation three. And so, if you recall, there was a couple of dwellings on uh, these sort of two streets in Salisbury where the dwelling faces onto a different road other than sort of the, um, the sort of ward, I guess, and then sort of World Council Division that it's in. And so what we have proposed, so, so here it's slightly confusing, we're using different different colours, and I have sort of said to Kieran, can we try and use consistent colours? And so Kieran, can you just, just confirm uh, exactly for the committee what the current boundary is and what we had recommended? So the uh, purple line is the current um, boundary, both a unitary division and city ward uh, and the black line is the sort of new proposal so number 12 there um, would be going from um, uh, 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 Milford into St Francis and Stratford uh, whereas C um, would go in the other direction um, because it is actually facing uh, onto uh, Cambridge Road rather than Dorset Road um, and I believe this was first raised to us by the local division member uh, who was in agreement. That's right. Yeah. So essentially, the orientation of the properties is such that uh, they face onto different roads. Yeah. The sort of the line has been drawn um, around them. So yeah, we felt that this made complete sense. We had absolutely no responses um, to this, unsurprisingly. So does anybody wish to to make a comment on this? Uh, if not, can I have a proposal uh, or something? Propose we go with the recommendation, Chair. Okay. Do you have a second, please? Yeah, Ernie. Okay, all those in favour? Okay, that's carried. Um, so recommendation four, so this was one that was identified um, by elections, the elections team. 
yeah. I believe. So this didn't come from a division member or resident. And uh, what you've essentially got here is the sort of the existing boundary line in purple there going through this site. And we had made the draft recommendation that the area E uh, be transferred from the parish of uh, Royal and Bassett to the parish of um, Brinkworth. And again, uh, we've had no responses uh, to the survey. Does anybody wish to speak on this? If not, can I have a proposal, please, yeah, Alison? Propose. I'm happy to propose. That we continue with the draft recommendation Absolutely. as is. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a seconder? Okay, Paul Oatley. Yep. Okay, all those in favour? Okay. <coughs> so that's carried. I think this next one won't be quite so simple. This is recommendation five. Um, is it Cliff Pipard or Papard? Cliff Pipard. Okay. So I say Pipard and Kieran says Papard. So. You're correct. That's fine. Sure. I'm, 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 I'm afraid I'm afraid would be I'll remind you every time you I hear you say If you so. wish to, you can say Kieran. Cliffy, but nobody will understand what you're talking about. Yeah, so so just to summarise this, uh, you'll, you'll recall that in our draft recommendation, we've got these two properties here. So 101, Kieran, if you could just put your um, mouse pointer over, and then that's that's 101, and there is this small dwelling here, which is 103. And the existing boundary line is the line in purple. So you've got um, Broadtown in the upper section and Cliff Pipard in the lower section, uh, all in the, the sort of Wiltshire Council and division of Lynham and we had made uh, the draft recommendation that uh, 103 so essentially that uh, where that black line is should be included in the parish of Broadtown and not Cliff Pipard and that that is essentially what we we recommended in terms of the responses yeah. chair can i just correct you that Sorry. broad town is not part of the lineham division it's is it not it's part of royal Wooden bath i do division. apologize i'm very very sorry i looked at the map and it said lineham there and i assumed that it was all all part of the same so in terms of responses we had um six responses to the uh, consultation so five uh, in disagreement and one in agreement Two responses from uh, residents in the, the sort of the area that we had marked F that we were proposing to transfer and in disagreement. Two from residents of Broad Town in disagreement. Two responses from uh, other parts of Cliff Pie Part. One in agreement and one uh, in disagreement. And then we had a lengthy written response, which you will have seen from the uh, from the residents, I assume, at 103. I believe so. Given that that's the the only dwelling we're proposing to transfer, and uh, it was from a resident in that area, sort of quite a sort of lengthy piece there around, uh, you know, sort of the reasons why, and obviously reasons for uh, people agreeing, although it was just the one, saying that the area is one home with two addresses. Obviously, they're currently in separate parishes and should be in one parish sort of made the point i think that um you know one was an annex of the other although i'm not um, sure how true that is i couldn't seem to find any evidence on the planning portal that um you know that was the case yeah, i think that goes back quite a significant period of time alison i don't know if you've got any local knowledge on on the sort of status of that at all uh, the both of the properties are in uh, not in the same ownership but they are in related ownership um, so I think people would potentially view them as uh, a, a parcel, but they are yeah. two separate properties. But one is not an annex of the other. Yeah. No. Okay. And so the reasons for disagreement, sort of saying no need to change, Cliff Pipard is rural and dispersed, uh, removing outlying properties would increase isolation and serves no benefit, that it's geographically closer, 103, to Cliff Pipard. Yeah, and um, I guess... Technically, it may well be as not, not even sure it is as the clo as the crow flies. But just to make you aware, obviously, to access that dwelling, you can only do it um, through Broadtown. Alison, is that correct? Yeah, there is a track there, but I assume that it, there is no um, sort of vehicle access. Yeah, it's it is a funny one. I've got a, um, I, although obviously we're not talking about other parishes. Um, I have a similar. Um, similar properties um, at the other end of Lynham, uh, where you can only get to them by going through uh, your your patch, actually, um, Ashley. 
Um, I initially, were, when I looked at this, did my man on the, my man on the Clapham omnibus, although he'd have been extremely lucky to actually get his bus up that hill, um, and was trying to be sort of objective uh, about the, uh, the location of the property. However, um, when you're looking at where people belong, and the, I think the governance side of it makes no difference either way. Um, but it is very clear from the correspondence that we've received uh, that the uh, current occupant of that property um, vehemently disagrees and as it only affects one property, uh, I, I, uh, ha I am swayed um, with the argument to actually uh, have that property in Cliff Piper rather than Broad Town. So I would propose that that property is in Cliff Pipeford. It's, it's interesting because it, it sort of has flip-flopped. I have a number of properties that have flip-flopped with no actual boundary changes. Um, so I have properties that appear and disappear off the electoral register yeah. where no boundary changes have taken yeah. place. So on that particular area around there, um, over the 25 years I've been a councillor, I'm, I'm amazed sometimes at which properties do appear uh, yeah. on my electoral register. Uh, and this is one of those that, that sometimes does and sometimes doesn't. So it'd be nice to actually get it sorted out. Um, uh, and as I say, the, the, uh, the current resident who's been there some time very clearly believes that they belong in Cliff Piper Parish. OK, we will come back to your proposal in, in just a second, if I can just finish summarising. So uh, the... <laughs> that's OK. It's just there's a couple of other points I just need to make um, before we, we start to discuss this. So as part of that submission from that resident, they also identified some other dwellings that they considered to be in a similar situation as their own. I don't know, Kieran, if you could just move the map to those particular locations. If you zoom out a little bit, I'll help you find it. Yeah, that's it. So that's so go to the, the first one, the top one first. So. so the resident in question made the point, well, if you know, this is not the only anomaly here. And if you're proposing to transfer mine, then why are you not looking at the wider piece, which is is a fair point. And so there's this one here. So that the boundary line is the is the dotted black line. Alison, you might know more on whether that's just a single dwelling there. I assume it is. It looks like a very square, uh, very sort of rectangular building. But... That that uh, it's a um, class Q. It was a class Q conversion. Um, and um, I have never had that property in my division. Okay. It's the wrong side of the road. Yeah. The left hand, the bottom part where it's a scrapyard, that's that's in my division. The other, the other one is um, there are other properties. If you go around the bend, mm. um, all of the other properties on that side of the road are actually, uh, to the best of my knowledge, either in Royal Wood and Bassett. Um, Town, I think actually that, uh, or in in uh, broad. Yeah, there's there's, town. A, there's a sort of a T there, isn't there? Yeah. I think Royal Wood and Bassett. Is so north. the milestone, the actual yeah. parish boundary, is on that sort of corner. On so, corner. Um, yeah. And what is what is directly below? So you see that there, where Kieran's got the cursor there. Yeah. What, what's that there? Um, there is some kind of development that has taken place behind um, large fencing. Um, some of it, I believe, does have. Uh, class, I say it's class Q development. Um, so there are a couple of, there is a, there is a residential property there, um, but not, not in the Cliff Piper Parish. So there are residential dwellings in both There is a locations. residential, to the best of my knowledge, there is a residential dwelling behind the... Uh, either either that side place. of those lines, so one in, one in each side. I'm only aware of one. Um, I will take a closer look next time I drive down there. Um, but it's they're not obvious from the road, shall we say. They've been built in a location where you can't actually see them very easily from the road. Mm. Um, probably have to check the, because they're, they, if they are that they are new, they've not been in my patch and they've not been consulted upon as properties <laughs> as such because they were class Q properties. Um, so it's not something that I've uh, has ever been on my radar. The local member for uh, Roy Wooden Bassett and, and, uh, uh, and West, or West and uh, South and West um, may Bowler. know about it, which is Councillor Bowler, but it's not actually um, featured anywhere on my radar so far. 
Okay, and Kieran, if you could just move to the second. It was identified. Which is this particular cluster here, and you've got what looks like manor farm cottages one and two. Yeah, so on that, there are four cottages there, um, which are South Farm cottages, uh, which are currently uh, in um, uh, the Lyme division. Uh, so they are part of Cliff Piper. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the ones, the, the amount of farm cottages are, yeah, South Farm cottages are Cliff Piper and Mm, as our manor farm cottages yeah. and then there's a few cottages further along if you can so, you just zoom out here and so we can see that the um the parish name uh, yeah i mean the right hand <laughs> side is Georgetown, um, and the yeah. left hand side is cliff Piper. yeah and those are the ones that i keep saying they keep flop flip flopping between my my yeah. division well and i can understand why division. because the line goes through the you know, yeah the, the back edge of the of the property so i suspect yeah. that elections have probably not even sure themselves I mean, no and yeah. at the moment they're, they're listed under under cliff piper manor farm cottages or south farm cottages some of the yeah the south farm cottage and, and manor farm cottages are listed i believe under my division in cliff piper which yeah. Based on that boundary, that, that should not be the case. No, and they okay. never used to be, but they appeared um, yeah. recently okay. and came as a bit of a surprise to me. I think this talks to exactly why we try and address this particular mm. problem where you have these sort of splits that mm. are either very, very close. And then there's a couple of cottages. If you go um, carry on, up, yes, yeah. there, are, there are four cottages there which are in, in Broadtown. So those four are, there are no other dwellings along that road. Those four cottages are in Broadtown, but the other cottages are in, allegedly, in Cliff Piperd. Okay. Karen, if you could just zoom out. So that, so essentially along, the, the, those are the three sort of anomalies that have been identified by the resident of 103, pointing out that her own dwelling is in a similar situation to those other two locations. I mean, this no doubt this exists all over Wiltshire, you know, and if we were to sort of sit there and try and go through them all, we'd be here for years. But regardless of that, the fact is this has been brought to our attention now. We are looking at this area. And the question is, is what is the right thing to do in this circumstance? Now, I, Alison, I'll bring you in a second, and I sort of... The very fact that Alison, you said that they are they flip flop between electoral divisions would indicate that that is not good governance um, for that to take place. So yeah, I am minded to suggest that we should potentially consider whether or not we should actually be addressing all three at the same time. And I'm interested to hear what others think on that. Alison. So I would say that um, the South Farm Manor Cottages is definitely worth um, looking at um, because um, they are a cluster and a, a line through those it doesn't make any sense. The other one um, over by the scrapyard, I, I would say is not part of um, because everything on that other side of the road is in uh, on the same side of the road that is actually um, in uh, the Wooden Bassett um, division. So that one, I would say, if you're going to use the use the middle of the road as a as a break, but the ones at Manor Farm and South Farm, and it's definitely worth trying to sort those out. So can I just ask a question, just tease out a bit more, Alison? So the the dwelling that we think is directly north of that dotted line there where Kieran has his pointer. Yeah. What is it that makes that dwelling different that should mean that it's in a different parish and electoral division to the one that's directly adjacent to it and the one's opposite the road or the one opposite the road on the opposite side of the road? The one on the opposite side of the road, quite frankly, is a mobile home. Um, and I think it crept in at some point and never actually, you know, possibly slightly under the radar. But presumably um, the two that are on the other side of the road are, even if they are class Q conversions, they are still now registered dwellings 
with an address. Yeah, they, and... they, may, they may well be. I know nothing about them, so all I know is where they are, yeah. and I, all I know is that you drive past them and people keep asking me yeah. what they are. Um, they're not in my division at this point in time, so I don't, I don't actually know anything about them. Okay, I've got others that want to come in. I think Ian Blair Pelling's next. Um, echoing what you said about the cluster in South, I would ag yeah. agree. That this, but staying with, with these ones, um, I, I'm always averse to a line down the road because you go back to the question of how do you explain it to the house on one side of the road and the house on the other side of the road. So I'm averse to that. So in my view, those north of the road should almost undoubtedly be in the same, which... Um, parish whichever that is i'm slightly unclear from what we've been said as to what residency there is in that southwest of the road because if there's nothing if there's no actual yes, there registered residence then we could draw a line down the road if if there is then we should be putting all three or whatever into the same parish in my view mm -hmm. and i could be swayed either way as to which parish yeah. Yeah. i just don't like the idea of putting a line down a road between two residents okay thank you ian i will look whilst whilst you're talking and each of you make your points and i will try and identify if they have residential addresses i think i can do that might help inform the debate gavin did you want to come in well, it seems to be almost op opening the proverbial can of worms, uh, doesn't it, um, here? And, I, and I'm minded of your comment. This has been drawn to our attention, so we need to deal with it. But I'm minded of your comment and, and, and Alison's comments about things moving backwards and forwards, that this could be um, a substantial amount of work across the county as a whole, um, were we to go down this particular uh, route. Um, however, that does seem that seems uh, particularly the two examples that we're looking at seem particularly uh, anomalous, and I am disturbed that somehow a, a, a couple of cottages, um, which are in one electoral division, can then suddenly appear in a, in another electoral division when we haven't moved the, the boundaries. That seems um, worthy of a separate discussion uh, <laughs> elsewhere um, with our colleagues in in uh, in the elections. Uh, segment as to how that could possibly take place. I think we do need, I think Ian has this absolutely right, we do need to understand whether th these blocks that we're looking at are residential, occupied residential buildings or intend to be occupied or whether they are something yeah. else. So that's, perhaps yeah. we can start there. I think I can answer that question. So the sort of similar mapping system to what Kieran is using but with a different layer that is specifically for the planning department has uh, property points on them, little blue dots you can click on and it'll tell you the status of the property, what's it, what its address is, so is it commercial, is it residential, or is it just land? I don't think you've got it on that. The layers don't exist on that one. It's, I've got a separate link, looks very similar to what Kieran's got, but it's different. I have a number of different mapping um, links for you know, different service areas used. This is for elections, this one's for planning. Yeah, and, and according to this, where Littleworth is on the left, scrapyard, Kieran. Littleworth, there is a residential address there. That would indicate that is a, a residential dwelling, irrespective of it, whether it's a caravan or otherwise. It's still, still a residential dwelling. Oh, you have got it. Okay, you put them on. And if you click on the sort of the, the blue, the blue triangle there, that's just land. So that those two buildings whatever they are to the west of that little yeah blue point they are they don't appear to be residential well, in nature Sorry. and the one to the north if you click it kieran mm -hmm. you'll see there when it loads which it should try it yeah. try it again Go on, Ian. Sorry, there is there is a triangle kind of in the middle of the road. I just wonder if it actually refers to those one of those two buildings. No, it doesn't. I, I will read exactly what it what it says. 
working. I don't know why it's not loading on yours, Kieran. It did quite perfectly on mine. Well, it, ironically, it's crashed on mine too. So I, 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 I wonder whether or not, for whatever reason, the sort of the um, the, the ArcGIS system has stopped responding, and we'll, we'll give it up. But it, anyway, I can confirm that it, the one north of the boundary does have a residential um, address. Alison, sorry, just just casting my mind back. I was actually driving back and forth past this site yesterday, and I. And I think, so there is definitely a residence, and I think it is the one that you've pointed out. I think the other currently is a storage yard, because I've been trying to see whether or not anything else has crept onto it. Um, and I don't think I have spotted um, a, uh, a residence on there. I, I think there is only one residence there. As regards the other bit, whatever happens, whether, uh, so if, if this, the property we originally are discussing, number 103, um, and the, the sort of little manor farm, south farm cluster, they both actually have division, would have a, an effect on the division boundary. Uh, and therefore, um, if we're going to look at those other ones as well, uh, we should delay the, one, the decision on the 103 until that is resolved so that we go in with one um, a request for a division boundary change, if it is whichever way it's determined, that there may well be uh, a tweak on the division yeah. boundary there. So, if we, you know, if we're going to look at those ones, we either just deal with 103 and just say thank you very much for pointing that out. We'll deal with that at the next review, or we do the whole lot. And I think that's our decision that we have to make. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. Now that the other anomalies have been raised to us, if we're going to a you know, make any further recommendations we should do it on the basis of all of it rather than just 103 and for some reason it looks like maybe somebody's playing with the um, the planning layer on the GIS system because on mine it popped up and said can't load the layer and it did on Kieran's as well so maybe somebody is from the um, applications team has possibly broken the layer in the middle of our meeting unrelated I'm sure they'll fix it but it was working on mine and you know, there is definitely a residential dwelling either side of the boundary at the, sort of the northern point we were looking at. So how do we want to take this forward then? I mean, do we want to suggest you know, as a committee now, do we feel like you know, we should unify them uh, because of the governance issues that we've, we've raised? Alison? So I would like to propose that um, as regards, because the person who lives in 103, uh, this has been quite uh, upsetting for that person. Um, so I would actually like to, to suggest that it, it in two parts, that actually uh, we recommend that 103 is in the Cliff Pipered um, parish, but the, the actual, um, put, put it, putting that into effect, um, uh, sort of alongside that, we, we will also look at the south, the manor, manor farm cottages, south farm cottages. So before actually implementing that decision, we t we have a review of those uh, and then deal deal with them as a whole. But actually recommend that 103 um, goes into, is in Cliff Piper, uh, and then determine those other ones because of the the issue about the division boundary change potentially with that. Thanks yeah, working. yours is working, isn't it? Yeah. I personally think I would struggle with that approach. Just, just to, so they're, they're discrete. They are quite discrete from each other. Um, but if you're looking at actually dealing with the suggestions that the the member of the public has made, if we wish to pursue those, then they they should be. Um, we should go back to the Boundary Commission um, with both of those recommendations if there are, because there will be boundary changes, whichever way they go, because it's a division change, whichever way you go on those, yeah. might, you might as well go back with both of them. Yeah, but we can request that as part of this process. When we jump, we do uh, in other areas when we make these Yes, these I changes. understand that, but, but one request rather than 
two bits. That, that's all I'm saying, is that we just yeah. go as one way. Yeah, Kieran, something. Can I just clarify? So you're suggesting that of the three potential anomalies, the one you currently consulted upon, you'd like to say withdraw that recommendation and you'd like to propose an additional recommendation to unify South Farm cottages and Manor Farm cottages and um, and some sort of proposal relating to the uh, bit at the scrapyard. So we'd consult on those two and then you'd make a final decision and then all three, well, then in that case, only two would go to full council because the other one would be dropped. Is that correct? Well, what I would say is that at the moment, I think we have dis discussed the 103 situation. Yeah. Uh, and I think we are hopefully in a position where we can make a recommendation on that. Um, the the discussion at the moment, and I'd like to put that one to bed. Um, the discussion at the moment then ref is whether or not we wish to review the other anomaly that's been pointed out, which is, uh, well, the two anomalies. I personally don't think that that the the one opposite the scrapyard is that relevant because um, there are other properties on that side of the road which are part of the broad town division um, so um, and going round the road everything on that north side of the road are part of the broad town division but you know if you, if you want to consult that's fine um, but i do think it would be useful to get the the south farm um, South Farm, Manor Farm, Cottages situation resolved. Alison, maybe you can just help us out here and just point us to those that are on the same side of the road as that class Q conversion, I think you called it. Um, if Kieran, farms, if Kieran can zoom, can zoom out. Um, let's, go, let's go to the broad, yeah, broad you, town road. Yeah. Not the broad town road. It's the um, cliff. It is the Bushton Road, effectively. So Littleworth, okay, so come come towards the, yeah. Right, so go down at sort of about four o'clock and there's there should be some farm, farm, there's a farm on the corner, which is actually in Broad Town. And there's also another farm uh, with a long drive, which I can't see from here. That's also in yeah. broad in either. I think that's in Broad Town or Wooden Bassett. Yeah. It's not it's in, not in Cliff Piper. So yeah. stuff on that yeah. side of the. And if you just go round back towards sort of Wooden Bassett, so um, there's another farm just around the corner. You can see there just above the green. That's also in, in um, either Wooden Bassett or Broad Town. That's in Wooden Bassett, but there's quite a significant. Um separation distance though isn't there with the other ones you're referring to whereas that cluster is all together in one piece you know, once you get down to that road where thorn Kieran, can you just zoom back out there where thorn thorbrush view nursery is there's also if you go along um there's another road oh. with a with vale oh. farm which is also that's i mean there aren't many properties around there so um i mean but, I, I don't yeah. I don't know what the right answer is in terms no. of if you were to make a recommendation on on making a change there, there you know which parish should they be in is it one or the other mm. I just I'm what I'm struggling with is that you could explain you know we always have this discussion at how do you explain to people that are living very closely together you know, directly opposite each other on the same road yet they are in completely different parishes and in completely different Wiltshire council divisions I'm finding that hard in my own mind to sort of sort of say how I would explain um, to you know to the people living one side of the road and the other about why. I think it, when you have a separation distance, it becomes a bit easier, um, but it's much harder in that scenario. Just like it is in a bit further down, where there's a cluster of them. You're know, saying you should resolve that one, but not that one. Yeah, they are almost entirely the same sort of situation. I I think if you um... The, ha the single house there is actually well set back off the road and there is and it's not a road that you walk on so whether there is a community there or not i don't know a community of two houses and where would you draw the where would you draw the line because that's that line is not where it is the house is above that line so i mean i i 
I have no strong feelings as to whether you consult on that or not. Um, but just, you know, you could, yeah, I've got, got Ian McClellan wants somewhere. to come in. Ian, do you want to come in? Got your hand up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it, this seems to be, we've started with one that looked okay, but that one has said, well, I'm happy where I am. And also, um, if I'm got to be moved, what about these others? And I don't think we've got enough information. You know, the, the, what, for instance, the one we're looking at, where the boundary cuts across the, 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 the couple of properties and then the one on the mobile home, uh, as explained, on the other side. What we don't know is what what land of, is that mobile home responsible for? Is, is it any, any land at all? Or you know, does it own all those fields to the north? Um, you know, if we go and wrap around and put it into you know a different parish, which is a possibility, not saying it's a probability, but it's a possibility to link with the other ones on the other side, then um, we've disconnected them from the, all of their lands. So, and, and the, I suppose the scrapyard could be in the same position. They have land the other side. So, I, I don't think there's a, an easy answer, and it may be insoluble. We don't know. We haven't got enough evidence. So. I'm not not happy with recommendations at this point, only exploration if we want to. And I'm not even sure we want to, uh, to be quite honest. Thank you. OK, it sounds like where we're probably at is that we've had very strong representations from the owner of 103. I'm not sure I necessarily agree that you know you can easily explain why one is in one parish and one is in the other, but you know, irrespective the individual has made quite clear uh, their feelings on that. So are we, what I'm starting to sense, or there's any really Alison talking, that, that is, we maybe want to drop that draft recommendation. We probably don't want to make any further recommendations on the other areas that have been identified, but we may wish to explore it in more detail and come back to it at a later date. Does that sound like a sensible approach? Gavin. Chairman, I think that's a very good summary of, of where we are. Um, uh, we discussed earlier what, what the North Bradley um, uh, discussion about the fact that we do listen to individual representations that have been made to us, and that resident has made very strong representations uh, to us. Um, and therefore, I don't think there is a compelling case to say you, have, you the resident, have that wrong. Uh, and we, the committee, have it right. So I'm, I'm, if Alison were proposing that we uh, drop our, our recommendation here, I would very happily second that. Uh, there clearly is something odd in that South Farm Manor Farm cottages. You know, there are four, if you look at the map, there are four, there's a garage block of four, and our, our boundary appears to go straight through the garage block. Um, so th there's something odd there, yeah. and I do think that that is worthy of a little bit of further investigation, particularly if they've flip-flopped between between uh, divisions, uh, which clearly shouldn't be happening. Um, so I think there is something in that, um, and the fact that the resident of 103 has drawn it to our attention, the divisional member, or part of it, has drawn it to our attention in in this, this particular um, discussion. As to the last piece, I, I, I candidly don't think we, we understand enough about what's going on uh, there uh, and we these are not we've recognized I think these anomalies exist all over the place uh, it's not entirely obvious to me uh, because of historic drawings of boundaries um, whether we whether by moving that boundary in that particular location we're actually resolving anything um, because I'm not quite sure where how where we would move it to it, so yeah. I'm in favor of withdrawing the the recommendation so having a little bit of work done around the Manor Farm, South Farm, Cottages area to try and understand that better uh, and possibly not to be pursuing the other matter either. Yeah. Are you, are you happy to make that proposal, Alison? Yeah, I, well, I think Gavin has. Yeah. I'm happy to second it. Just to say that um, uh, I do know the resident of 103 and I think probably the uh, pointing out of the other anomalies was more as a, not that we should be looking at them necessarily, um, but as a justification for for um, not necessarily having to change the, that situation. So I don't think it's a, you've got to look at these. I think it's, by the way, these are other anomalies that I would like to, to just point out um, because anomalies exist. Yeah. So I don't just think. 
Okay, does anybody else wish to speak on this? No. So we've got a proposal on the table, and then we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Okay, so none against. That's unanimous. Thank you. So uh, just, just for my own, so that was withdrawing recommendation uh, five uh, with the 103, 101 situation, not making any draft recommendation relating to the other two areas, but in particular relating to Manor Farm and South Farm Cottages, basically do some additional um, exploration, probably with elections, to see what's going on there. Yeah, because I, I think it may just need exploring with elections to, to, yeah. be, to make sure that it's clear on their system which side of the boundary the relevant properties sit and which polling district they are in. I suspect that the reason why they've they've flipped from one to the other is somebody's just allocated them to the wrong polling district because the line is so close. Now, you know, yes, it does go through the, the very slight corner of a building, but the vast majority of the building is in uh, in is in one um, parish. And I think it would be relatively easy to be clear about which property is in which is on which side yeah. I, I think it just requires i don't think we need to come back and say here's a proposal for more wider changes and trying to include everything there in one parish or the other i think we'll open up pandora's box if we do that but Clear. just a conversation with elections okay uh, so on to recommendation six so this was a proposal so the the purple line is the existing so we made a recommendation that the area marked as g and b transferred from the Chippenham Hardens and Central Ward to the Chippenham Pewsham Ward. Reasons why we suggested that, you know, Ray Close is obviously one one road uh, and part of it was in one uh, ward and part of it was in another. We have had a response from the Town Council to say they are in agreement with those recommendations uh, and nothing else uh, to say otherwise. So does somebody want to Maybe a proposal. Happy to propose to go forward with the recommend chair. Okay. Recommendation. Do you have a seconder? Yeah, Alison. All those in favour? Okay. Uh, we'll move on to uh, recommendation seven. So again, this is similar to six. So the existing line is uh, is the purple line, and we have proposed that area H be transferred from Grove to uh, Lambrock. No responses at all in the consultation, but previously the unitary members and town council had indicated their support. So I think very similar. So a proposal. Um, Peter proposed recommendation. Okay. Do you have a seconder? Yeah. yeah. Perny, all those in favour? Okay. <coughs> recommendation eight. So we've got two here on the left side. Uh, existing boundary is uh, is in purple. Proposed. Uh, is in is in black. Now it doesn't look obvious from this why we've why we've made this recommendation, but there is a, a rural exception site of affordable housing, 21, 22 dwellings, that are due to be built out there. The permission has been granted. Uh, the existing boundary line in purple would go straight away th straight through uh, one of those dwellings, and so we are saying we would like to unify the whole site into into Calm, and rather than Calm without. And then on the right hand side there, you've got the existing boundary going down the middle of the high street. Um, we are suggesting the, the black line, or recommending the black line, uh, so that you take everything that's on the high street and you include it in the same um, same ward. No responses um, at all on either of these, but count without, so in relation to the sort of the left hand side, um, area I did respond in the pre-consultation to say they supported um, you know, the changes. So, happy to propose both, Chairman. Okay, do you have a seconder? Ernie, yeah, all those in favour? Okay. Okay. What's the next, next one in your area, Mr. O? That's the right way. So recommendation nine. This is a bit more interesting. So, I don't recall where this actually came from. Um, it came from elections. It did. Okay. So existing line purple proposed uh, is is to move the area K uh, from the parish of Wilcott, Hewish, and Orr to the parish of West Overton. Uh, we did have some responses. <laughs> ironically, uh, two survey responses. One from each parish council. Um, Wilcott. 
were in uh, were disagreeing Kennet Valley it wasn't me uh, Kennet Valley um, agreeing that the agreement was about saying the remote location proximity to other properties in Kennet Valley and the disagreement was about the, the property being remote regardless and the sort of historic boundaries and that the residents are content we did actually have a response from the resident directly who put in quite a compelling representation I think about uh, how they felt where they were and their wish to remain as they, as they are so I personally think that's that's quite clear and we you know that we like to hear those kind of things so I don't know if Paul you want to speak yeah. to this so I, I think I think this is this has caused quite a quite a stir to say the least I mean Wilcott Hewish and or Paris Council um, are, are not very happy um, and I, I think really this the image we're seeing here now um, does not reflect really the the true um, the true reality of where we are um, and I don't know if Kieran can actually bring up the reality of where we really are here but this house is in the middle of nowhere um, literally in the middle of nowhere um, the the occupants are very passionate about remaining with Wilcott Hewish and Orr um, and even the report for me uh, creates some form of ambiguity <coughs> Um, and, and what I say by that is, no communication has been received from electoral services nor from Kennet Valley Joint Parish Council relating to this proposal. Um, the, but then I see over here um, a recommendation, a representative of the town or parish council affected by the proposals agreeing. It says Kennet Valley Parish Council support. So there's ambiguity in the report from one page to another. And I suspect this may well be just a parish councillor, not the parish council. Um, so um, that causes me an element of concern. Um, Wilcott, Hewish and all will actually talk about the lack of communication um, and consultation with them. That's a matter for a matter for debate. But Kieran, can you can you indicate where this this um, house is now, please? Uh, yes. I mean, first of all, I would say on the point, I understand that Wilcott, Hewish and all Parish Council feel a bit upset that they were not sort of pre-consulted about this proposal. But as I've, I've attempted to make clear to them, that's because it was a minor Anomal potential anomaly which was sort of brought to the attention of the committee sort of part way through the process their area was not under review other than the fact that the committee had agreed that all areas could have a look at anomalies so i understand that they're upset but there was nothing intentional there we brought it to their attention as soon as it emerged but you can see the cursor is where the cottage is it's it is as councillor Rory says in the middle of well it's not anywhere near anywhere it, it, would, it would appear um, uh, and the resident has spoken up very strongly in support um, I would say that the response that we received on the survey was that Kennet, but Kennet Valley did not suggest it but when they were asked about it they said yeah it looks like they said and that was their official so they hadn't made any contact with Wilcott because they were told at the same time um, as Wilcott um, so they said seems to make sense to us because it's closer to some of our properties. Wilcott, Hewish and all very much disagree because of the history and connection and the resident themselves clearly disagrees very strongly as well. And whatever it was in um, would be um, a long way from anywhere else. Um, Thank you, Kieran. Uh, Paul, do you want to make a proposal that we, it sounds like you're sort of yeah, thinking I'm, we should withdraw this one? My proposal is that this property remains within the parish of Wilcox, Jewish and Orr. I mean, um, you would have seen all of the historical evidence that relates to this, which is a great, great, great length, right. and, and that's it. I, I think it should remain where it is. If that's what the parishioner wants. I think it's logical, yeah. and I think that's a recommendation. Yeah, I'm happy to second that. Uh, does anybody else wish to speak on this? No. All those in favour? Carried, thank you. Yeah. If we can move to recommendation 10, then this is Bradford and Avon. So, that area L, we recommended it be transferred from one ward to the other, from, uh, from north to uh, south. This anomaly was raised by elections, I think, yeah. and we have had no responses uh, from anyone done nothing to indicate that we've we've made an error here in our recommendation so does anybody wish to speak or make a proposal happy to propose the recommendation Jim. okay Second. yeah seconded by paul all those in favor okay yeah that's carried thank you uh recommendation 11 i'm going to let kieran explain this one because i'll get myself in an absolute pickle because it appears that we've picked up um an anomaly that really was an anomaly 
where um, there should technically have been a polling district that contained one property because the lines were not drawn to coexist uh, to be coterminous so kieran can you try and explain uh, otherwise I'm I, I, will, I will do my best so you may recall that the this area was brought to our attention by elections because of bolwell place you can see the property there which says one to nine it is actually connected to the um bit to the to the left um it's one block of flats and it's currently divided between um uh, divisions um, and so that seemed to make sense to deal with that when you looked at it um we were looking at the different layers um the, uh, just as a reminder the purple line is the division boundary um the black lines are the proposals but the black line that we've drawn for n matches what was showing on the layer as a polling district line um that is there was a polling district line running through that um building of some kind now we did go back to elections to ask about this um and and i do think it is an anomaly so whether it's been drawn for the consulted proposal um so the bit that says bank um is on lowborn to lowborn and the bit which has the n on it is part it's addressed as part of the high street it's two two bits within the same sort of you know connected buildings what's probably happened is the lgbc have drawn the line down the sort of lane not realizing that those are actually on different street addresses technically facing onto different streets one on the high street one on lowborn um so your proposal was to snap those two back together essentially um by um uh, moving n um into south with the rest of the high street and moving m uh into um forest with the rest of bolwell place um as yeah. you said i think that suggest there may be something slightly odd going on if there's anybody living above that bit on the high street um, yeah we don't know if there's anybody living above that but quite how they would have voted in the relevant elections when the polling district line was there i, I don't understand what the impact of that would have been but it it wouldn't have been right no matter what it's, it, it certainly needs correcting we had uh, one written response from the town council and uh, they raised no objection so I think that's pretty clear. Somebody happy, happy to propose the recommendation. Yeah, uh, seconded by Ian Blair Pilling. All those in favour? Okay. And we will come back to, in a second, an additional point that was raised by Melksham Town Council uh, on another area. We'll, we'll address that shortly. So recommendation 12. If you recall, uh, we looked at this. The existing line is the purple line. And uh, quite clearly, it is designed to follow the watercourse, but for whatever reason, a mapping error or uh, you know, some other issue, it, it um, was off the line of the watercourse and was running through certainly at least one dwelling um, further on down the line. We propose that, or our draft recommendation is that the line should be uh, on the watercourse. We've had no responses disagreeing with that. So the question is, are we happy to proceed with that? Happy with both recommendations. Yeah. Does anybody want to second that? Yeah, Alison, all those in favour? Okay, it's carried. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the, of the list of draft recommendations that we made previously. We do now have a couple of additional ones to look at. Kieran, are you able to talk us through these? Please? Yes. So uh, in responding to the previous Melchon recommendation, uh, the Town Council drew, drew attention to uh, the area of Coronation Road, uh, which is displayed here with the colours reversed, I'm afraid. I've taken you on board that. Um, so the, uh, the black line is the current line and the red line is the proposed line. They didn't propose a specific line, but I went back to them with it. Um, and the local member who is, uh, well, one of the local members is uh, John Hubbard, um, and he says this seems to be correct, puts all of the properties of Coronation Road into the same division and ward, whereas at the moment they are divided, and one side of the street votes in one division and one side votes in another. Okay, so, I mean, this is very similar to the Chippenham and Trowbridge ones that we've just looked at, and, you yeah, know, would seem to be quite clear to me that to have that arrangement as things stands would not make sense to anybody on the ground and it's probably um, you know, a typical case of leaflets ending up in the wrong wrong, um, wrong dwellings when elections uh, are taking place. Kieran, presumably we can make some draft recommendations here and do we have time to go out to consultation to bundle these with our final recommendations? I, I would say you do. When they are very 
minimal changes like this, um, you can do a shorter consultation. Um, you've done ones as short as two weeks before. I would suggest you have time to, particularly as we know what the local member and the town council think, we can even write out to these individual properties to ask their view, um, ask for a response by the end of April, um, and uh, then you can make a decision in early May for okay. May Council. Okay, and they would not be changing from one parish to another, no. it's purely from one ward to another. And we would also request that the, uh, the Wiltshire Council division Yes, um, is aligned uh, with that change. So we'd ask the consent of the LGBC. Yeah. LGBC. Yeah. Does anybody want to make a proposal? Happy to propose that we do precisely that, John. Okay. Seconder. Yeah. All those in favour? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. Karen, I'm going to let you talk through this one because I think you actually went up here. Yes, <laughs> yes based I on did. your photos, that's commitment for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, so um, what happened here is that North Bradley Parish Council were being consulted about a planning application at Number Eight Island, uh, which is uh, on the on the right hand map here, um, the sort of hamlet of Scotland and Ireland, um, um, and they were saying like doesn't appear to be on our electoral um, roll. Um, and that's because it is on the other side. So this is um, area is sort of midway between, or broadly midway between North Bradley and Southwick. Um, and this, uh, you can see the road on the left-hand side here. It is a bit close to North Bradley. And it goes straight through the middle of the settlement, uh, including through at least two, possibly technically going on to four properties. Uh, numbers six, seven, eight, and 10 Island are in Southwick. Number nine is in... In North Bradley. Um, uh, I sent through the uh, photos I took on the site yesterday. Um, the only uh, the sort of main vehicular access is in North Bradley um, uh, and it says no through road. There is a track leading to Scotland Cottage which you can access from the other side but it does say you shouldn't be driving in there. I think they probably use it for exit and it was also a bridal path. Um, we did ask the um, we we went back to the two parish councils and said, do you have any views about should anything happen here? Um, uh, Southwick haven't responded at all. North Bradley said, oh, thanks. Uh, and they said they were going to be looking at it on Monday, um, so not in time for the committee. Um, so you, you could, in theory, sort of defer to see what they want to say, or you can make no decision now. I have provisionally suggested uh, a line here. Um, the area is closer to North Bradley. The entrance is at the bottom of the hill leading up to the Southwick. The, sort of lane on the left hand side here the, the sort of sign for Southwick is after that lane um, the um, the way I've drawn it here is there's a couple of farm buildings which are part of that cluster at the entrance of Scotland and Ireland um, so you know perhaps aligning there even though there's no properties uh, and certainly my view on the ground was you couldn't tell one from the other you sort of go in through the one entrance and then it splits in two sections but they're all connected so you could consult on this proposal or a different proposal or wait for the parish councils to come back with a view Kieran if we were to wait for them to come back with a view would that mean that we would probably be unable to take it to the May Council with everything I think else? if you wanted to wait for their view before you're doing it then you what you might want to do is delegate to um, the director to agree a proposal to consult and we with after consultation with the committee so essentially you could not decide right now what you want to consult upon but you could agree off yeah. committee to delegate to yeah. Perry to make that call I think the line that's been drawn if parish councils were to be supportive and you know would seem to be quite sensible to me but it's quite clearly you know we want to be mm. careful that we don't sort of set hairs running and start a consultation make a yeah. draft recommendation and then we you know, everyone comes back and says where did that come from so just being mindful of the situation we had with yours so i'm quite happy that it's, uh, it seems you know, i think it's clear that you need to look at this very clear based on where the line is and does somebody want to make a proposal along those lines that we delegate uh, you know, to, to the director happy so to propose chairman and, yeah. and noting that uh, these documents are, are public property and therefore the news that Wiltshire Council is deliberating on the boundaries of Scotland and Ireland would be fairly entertaining. <laughs> yes. It's a chamber well, meeting on April the 1st. I, um, 
I, I was going to make that point, but I thought it would be unwise. But, um, Thank yes, you for the Northern uh, Ireland peace. Yeah, I, wonder, I, I wonder how Scotland and Ireland are going to feel about what we're proposing here, <laughs> that we're going to unify them. In all seriousness, we are talking about Scotland and Ireland in Wiltshire. Yes, about, so therefore in that context, I'm very happy to propose. Happy. Do you have a seconder? Are you seconding, Alison? I, I am, but I, I but I just think it is about time we reviewed the boundaries of New Zealand as well. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's in my division. I know, but some of the properties that are in my division I have to go through New Zealand. So I just wonder whether you might like them. No, I like that. I like this conversation for another day, maybe. Um, no more, please. Seconding, I think we've we've dealt with enough of these, and I, I'm quite looking forward to uh, having the election year off. And, doing community governance reviews. Uh, yeah. You're seconding that, yeah. Yeah, all those in favour? Yeah. yeah, are you happy with that, Kieran? Uh, yes, absolutely. So in yeah. practical terms, what we can do is I can contact the parishes again and say, we haven't heard back from you yet, but how's this for an idea? Um, and if they say, like, no, this, that's terrible, this is the preferred option, or we've got an agreement, or we both think you should leave it alone, we can circulate back to the committee and see if you want the director to then sort of go out to consultation or whether you want to let it drop or propose something else. Um, but, uh, yes. Okay, thanks, Karen. I think that's the last of them, isn't it? The CDRs, yeah. Okay. All right, so we are on to agenda item seven, which is the parish name change review. If you recall, we had the option at our last committee meeting to recommend this straight to full council, uh, a name change um, for Cliff Pipard. We decided not to do that, and we said that we would seek the views of the um, local community. We have had quite a significant response to this. So we are, we we essentially did a consultation on changing the name uh, from Cliff Pipard to Cliff Pipard and Bushton. That is something that was requested by the parish council. It didn't come directly from us. We actually had 44 responses. Quite a significant response rate. I think that just speaks to the fact that we were right to undertake that exercise and not just take it straight to full council. Uh, 36 responses in favour and um, eight against the proposal. Uh, two of the responses against the proposal incorrectly stated that Cliff Pipard and Bushton were separate parishes under a joint parish council, uh, when the area is actually, as you know, a single parish with uh, multiple different communities and uh, some some sort of responses indicated well if you you know if you're going to go with cliff pipard and bushton why do you not where do you draw the line you know how many more other sort of the smaller communities do you include in the name but i think for me the overriding th thing here is that you know a significant uh, number were in favor the parish council itself has asked for this uh, and you know, and, and we've done this a number of times. And having two names in a parish council name is not not unreasonable. I think some we've got up to three. So I'm personally am comfortable that we continue with this, but would like to seek the views of others. Go on, Alison. Uh, so as local member, I'm very grateful to the parish magazine um, editors for. Um, sharing the survey so I did actually ask them to make people aware because I knew um, it would be contentious uh, I personally think that, um, uh, that it, it, it's it's probably the right time to um, actually affect this name change so I'm quite happy to support and recommend the majority um, view that the name is changed to Cliff Piper and Bushton Parish Council in that order okay are you making a, rep a proposal yeah are you happy are you wanting to speak or second that yeah uh, and and alison will put me right but but i'm led to believe that uh, cliff papa parish council meet in bushton village hall well, it used to be bushton village hall they have actually renamed the village hall to cliff piper and bushton village hall recently, <laughs> recent, recent, recently oh, well, um be, because it because it is for both of those communities I was I was so pleased to raise that chair. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are you yes yes Ernie sorry. Perhaps flippantly, is it? Did it not say somewhere in the report that Bushton was bigger than? Did, it's, did, it, did it not be the other way? No. No. All oh, right. <laughs> You may not wish to open that no. kind of words, Ernie. No, no, I mean, I think the thing is that historically it has been Cliff Piper. You're adding another parish to that. So 
in my way of thinking, I mean, I, I've been associated with that parish for 40 odd years. Um, if you're adding something to an existing, uh, then I think it's it, it's respectful to actually keep the existing first, even though it's not alphabetical order. I, I, I would add... To, or, or in order of magnitude. Yeah. I, I would add to that point that when you're changing the name under this process, Section 75, the Parish Council have to agree to the proposal. So if you did have a different proposal, you'd have to get their agreement as well. So sadly, I think Bushton and Clipper Park may be off the table from the sound. OK, well, we have a proposal and seconded by Councillor Oway. All those in favour? OK, that's carried. OK, well, that brings us to the end of, of our main business. All that's left is item 8, date of the next meeting, which will be the 16th of May. It's oh, it's changed. Eight. What's the new date? 8th of May. OK. So the next meeting is the 8th of May, not the 16th. Sorry, it's incorrect in your agenda pack, and I hadn't noticed that. And then item 9, urgent items, I have none. So that brings us to the end of our meeting. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day. Thanks, Joe. Cheerio. Thanks, Ian. <laughs>